Hello everybody, Jay Watts here. Today I am back with the tutorial for my stacked iron farm. You may notice it's a little bit bigger. I added five more villages to this. It is now a total of 30 farms. It's got 600 villagers. It produces a lot of iron. The rates on this farm are over 11,000 iron ingots per hour if you have the full 30 villages stacked. This thing produces a lot. Uh, credit for this, um, the original design was from Prowl8413 is his YouTube channel. Uh, he came up with the tower. I just figured out how to put them all together like this. Um, also credit to Old Guy. He basically has videos on just about anything you could ever want to know about iron farms. The only thing that I think I did differently on this than him is the stacking method. I figured out the way to stack them during the daytime using minecarts and rails. Uh, also, Wraith Mistwalker had a lot to do with this, helping Prow get the original design together with the distances between villages and the AFK spot and whatnot. So I just wanted to make sure to credit all of the people that made this possible and I will link their channels in the description. Okay, so the texture pack that I'm using in here is Compliant 64. I really like it. I know a lot of people have asked me what it was. I'll link it down in the description. It's just basically a high definition version of every texture that's in the game already. If you guys get anything out of this video, I would appreciate it if you would leave a like, comment maybe consider subscribing uh any kind of feedback is great I, i'd really appreciate it i'm still pretty new to youtube i'm absolutely blown away that i had i've gotten over 300 subscribers in the first four videos that i've put out two of which had to do with this farm so i was i was really surprised and any feedback that you guys give me just kind of motivates me helps me continue doing this i'm still new to youtube can't edit worth anything so please forgive me if it's not all that great okay i'm gonna do a quick fly around of the farm here um this thing does create a lot of lag i'm gonna warn you right now if you notice it's built out in the middle of an ocean i did it that way for a reason that way it's not some place that i'm always at in my world it's not going to slow me down when i'm in my regular gameplay the only time I come over here is to AFK for iron or trade with the villagers that are in here because this does double as a trading hall. Uh, the other thing that you can do is you can lower your render distance when you're building this. When I built this, I had my render distance all the way down to eight chunks. It did help reduce the lag. You're definitely going to want to do that while you're building this. And yeah, the lag is, is pretty bad. If I come back here, you're going to start to notice that my computer's starting to look like a slideshow. And I do not have an old computer or a slow computer. I have a 3070 Ti for the Win 3 Edition graphics card. It just, there is a lot of stuff going on here. An, an awful lot. The game engine's probably about ready to cry. So I'm going to do a quick fly around of this and then we'll get to a couple of things before we start the tutorial. Okay, so here is the basic layout. You can see up here, there's five farms on the top layer. Then down here, there's five farms on the bottom layer. The five layers here have four farms each. So you've got a total of 20 in the middle and then the bottom has five. And the top has five that'll give you your full 30 farms your afk spot will be directly in the middle so this village right here you're going to want your afk spot directly in the middle of that i'll show that later on um these are the walkways that you're going to use to bring your villages in and then down here this is going to be your shulker loader system. Uh, this is the shulker loader that I have a video of on my channel. So if you want to learn how to build this, just go ahead over and check out the tutorial that I did on it. Uh, the only thing different is this chest right here and the chest up there. Those have to be chests in this farm. In the tutorial for the shulker loader, they're barrels. But you don't want to use barrels in this farm because the villagers could link to it and mess it up. So yeah, that's 
the storage system that I've done for it. I put two of them here because hopper speed is 9,000 items per hour. You get 11,000 plus iron out of this per hour, so obviously you need to split it in half. Okay, so if we come up here, you can kind of see how I did the storage. I brought it from the center farm and that far farm. I brought it in, fed it into there, and then from there over down into this one. And then this side's a little bit simpler. It just goes from this outer farm here over to here, and you're going to bring everything in. Make sure you light all this stuff up down here so you don't have things spawning down here. Come down from AFKing and you're going to blow yourself up with a creeper or something. Okay, so the uh, way that you're going to build this, and this is very important, if you go for the full 30 villages stacked, this bottom center village is going to be the first one that you build. And then you're going to have to get your spacing between these farms and the second village you're going to build is the middle one up here on the top that's going to be your second village this one right over here that one's going to be your second village everything else you can walk these in here in any order you want to but I'm going to go ahead and suggest that when you do that, you start from the bottom, build this layer right here. Once you have this layer built, you're going to populate your first village with villagers. Then you're going to build this storage system. And then stack that village, then that village all these outside ones make sure you get the storage system under here first that way you don't have to mess with it later and it's going to take you a lot of time so yeah here it is I'll do one more quick fly around and uh, there will also be a world download in the description if you want to check it out I'll leave all of these walkways here basically everything will be exactly as what you see right here uh, if you have a lower end device I'm sorry it may not work I don't know. I've never tried this out on a lower end device, just on the PC that I own. So here we go. I'm going to back up from this, give you guys one more look, and we're going to hop into the tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start off. I am in just a random world. I picked a spot in the ocean, and you're going to want to do this out in the middle of an ocean. You don't want this anywhere in your world where you have other things, places that you go. You're going to want to have this be at least 100 blocks in every direction from any other villager related things that you have. Out in the middle of the ocean works. There's also going to be a lot of lag. It has to do with the villagers bouncing around in water. There's nothing that can be done from that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start at the center here. We're going to need 11 on all four sides. We're going to give ourselves some room for storage underneath. So we're going to come up by 13 blocks so we're going to do 12 temporary blocks the last one is going to be a marker block so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 final one is a marker block now you're going to want to come out this way all four directions you're going to want to come out 11 blocks 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11th block we're going to make that a permanent block we're going to do the same on all four sides okay so now that we have this shape right here we're going to go ahead and we're going to connect all of these we're going to make one big square outline so now that we have this square outline we're going to come in and we're going to mark six in from the edges on all four sides so we're going to one two three four five six we're going to place a block here do the same over here one two three four five six one two three four five six then we're also going to do this one one two three four five six now we're going to connect these up and then everything on the outside of these in this area 
that's going to be filled in. Okay, so now you can see we have that all filled in. That is going to be the floor of our villager trading hall. We're going to do a couple of things now. This here, this can go away for right now. Not needed. I'd leave that there as a temporary block for just a second. But all of this we don't need anymore. So we can take this all the way down. Okay, <clears throat> so now that we have that, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to put some lighting in here. We're going to fill in these corners. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All four corners. And then we're also going to put a little bit of lighting in here so that you don't have mobs spawning in here where your villagers are. Okay, so this is what you should now have. The platform is 23 by 23 outer dimensions, and then you're going to have these gaps right here are 5, 5, 5, and 5. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to start placing in a platform for our bed. So we're going to go here and here. You're going to fill this top layer right here. We'll get rid of that temporary block. Same thing here, all the way around. Okay, now that we have our platforms in for our beds, we're going to start putting our cells in for our villagers to stay in. You come over here to this middle block. You're going to step one to the side, place two glass, two glass. These need to be too tall. All right, that's our first pod second pod, third pod, fourth pod, fifth pod. Going to make these all too tall. Put blocks here, 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 and here. So you have this little L shape. Make these too tall. These are temporary. So you can use whatever you would like for these. This is also a temporary block at this level. We're going to be messing with villagers, possibly babies. You don't want them to be able to get into here to where the beds are. There's going to be lava right above our head. And if we do that, they can burn up. Now you're going to go ahead and do this on all four sides. I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so now we have all of our villager pods in. We need to go ahead and we're going to make a too tall wall of glass all the way around the outside. That's this entire deep slate tile area right here. We're going to build a too tall layer of glass all the way around that. Okay, so now we have that done. We're going to start working on our killing area for the golems and our spawning platforms. To do that, you're going to come in here. Come down here. You're going to place a temporary block here. One there. Break that. Come this way. We're going to make, we're going to make this outline right here. And we're going to leave one block out in the center. So all these blocks are going to be filled in. No center block. This is going to be our area where golems end up burning up and dying. We'll get to that in a minute. Now you're going to come over here. Place a temporary block here solid block there now this is going to extend all the way out to the edge of your farm so go ahead and fill in this entire outline leaving your killing area one block below and I'll be back in a minute when that's done okay so now you have that all filled in this is what you should be left with there's our killing area for the golems right here in the middle this is going to be the spawning platform. We're going to put a one high wall of glass all the way around the outside of that. And I will be back as soon as that is done. Okay, now that we have our one high wall of glass, we're going to come over here into the corners. We're going to get it set up for our water flow. Three blocks there, three blocks there. Same on all four corners. And we're going to come and we're going to place one block, two blocks, three blocks. We're going to do the same thing on all of these corners. This is going to help direct your water flow. 
and it's going to help you get golems flush down into the metal. Okay, so now we're done with this. We are actually going to come in here and get going on our storage system, temporary. This is just a temporary storage. You're going to want to have a much bigger storage system. This thing is going to produce a lot of drops. I mean a lot of drops. So we're going to put a sign here. Then we're going to take a solid block, place it on top of that sign. And then we're going to create a sign on all four sides of this. Okay. Now that we have that, we're going to come on the edge of this sign, place a sign here, sign here, one in the middle. Come around the other side, sign here, sign here on the edge of that one, sign in the middle. Okay, now we're going to come up here, you're going to place one sign off of that, then you're going to place one, two, then over here, off the edge of this, one, two, three three, four. Come over here. One, two, three, four. This is our lava blade. One, two, three, four. And then on this last one, you're going to put your final sign right there. All right, now what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to come in here. You'll be able to place your bucket of lava. Don't worry, this is bedrock. Signs do not burn. You might get a little animation that stuff is on fire down here when you build your farm. Don't worry, it is not burning. Okay, so now we're going to come over here. We're going to place a bucket of water in all four of these corners. You'll see that's flushing everything into the middle. Okay, so now everything is going to go right into the middle. Now let's come down underneath of this really quick and we'll get our storage set up. Okay, so now that you are under the farm, we're going to get a temporary storage built up. This is only temporary. There is no way that this is enough for this farm. Absolutely no way. So you can come here, you take a hopper, you're going to place it in there. You can come up here, you're going to take your rail, crouch place that on top of that. We're going to place a glass block on either side of this to keep the minecart from moving. Then you're going to take your hopper minecart, you're going to place that right there. Now you've got that all locked into place. What I like to do, break that rail, put another piece of glass, you're good there. Now you can come over here, place your chest. This is your temporary storage. You are going to have to come up with a better storage solution for this. I ran all of this into my shulker loader that I have a video for on my channel. Okay, now we're going to come up here. We're going to place our water in. Believe it or not, your iron farm portion is almost done. Okay, so water in that corner. Skip this block. Water all the way along this edge. Down to this block. In the corner. Skip this block. All the way down. In this corner, do not place water in this block, this block, or this block. Just along the edges. And then up on this block. And then along these edges right there that's going to bring all of your water flowing right into here this is what you're going to have now this is your basic iron farm setup as i said this design was from prowl 8413 this was part of his iron tower video this works very well for stacking together that's why i chose to use this one this is his design credit where it's due uh, if you want to check out his channel, I left the link in the description. Okay, so now we have this. This is going to be our center farm. I'm doing this a little bit differently than I did in the showcase world. The reason being, you can start with this with one, two, three, four farms on either side, and you'll be able to add to it. That way you don't have to predetermine the Y level of your top village. You'll just have it on the bottom on this one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to break our way in here. Make sure you close that up so your villagers don't get out. Close this up for right now. Okay, we are going to come in here. We are going to place beds. You want five beds on each one of these. 
and then in these gaps right here we're going to place workstations i'm going to use blast furnaces in here because they trade for iron we can get some emeralds out of it this doubles as a trading hall i'll be back as soon as i get all of these beds and these blast furnaces put in okay so now we have all of our beds and our workstations installed you can see now what we're going to do is we're going to come out come out of this area of the farm and make sure you block this back up you do not want villagers being able to access their beds they'll be able to access their workstations through here but they cannot access the beds bring your villagers from over anywhere you've got a villager breeder doesn't matter how you get them here bring them in a boat bring them in a mine cart however you move villagers just get them over here this is our first village so there's nothing special about it works just like any other farm I'm gonna spawn them in with eggs you can do it however you choose okay no babies in here no nitwits okay this guy has taken his workstation he's gonna come over here we're gonna give him a little nudge then we're gonna place a trap door right here and you're going to waterlog this piece of glass flip that up this is going to be very important these guys have to be floating in water in a normal iron farm they do not in this one they do it keeps them from delinking from their workstation and their bed this is very important if these guys are not bouncing in water the farm will break you will end up with villagers linking to the wrong things it'll scramble their POI and then it will not work all right so we're gonna bring in another one no babies get out of here guy all right he's taking his we're gonna get him in here put the trap door down throw that up I'm going to finish populating the rest of this village. We're going to have 20 villagers to go with all of these, and I'll be back when that's done. All right, so now you have all of your villagers in here in their pods. You have 20 villagers, 20 workstations, 20 beds. That means that we will be able to spawn two golems at a time. So if you come up here, we've got one golem burning right here. We can have two alive at the same time. They're not always going to be two at the same time. A lot of times there will only be one, but you can have two. So now what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and we are going to build another farm mirrored off this way, this way, this way, and this way. I'm going to do a quick layout so you guys can see what I'm talking about, and I will be right back. Okay, so this is the layout that you should now have. You're going to have this right here is 22 blocks. This right here is 23 blocks. This right here is 22 blocks. Same on this side, this side, and that side. What you're going to do is you are going to mirror image this farm into this space, this space, this space, and this space. This wall that wall that wall and that wall are going to be a common wall in between i'm going to go ahead and get that built up i'll come back and show you what it should look like you are not going to be placing any beds or any workstations yet at this time just the basic farm no villagers no beds no workstations so I will be back as soon as I get that done. Okay, so now that we have all of this done, you can now see what I was talking about with them sharing a common wall. That's this right here. This is this farm mirrored over to this side. Same on this one. Same for that one. Same for that one. The next layers up will only have the outside ones. This middle village will not be here on the next layer up. That's just for the bottom layer. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go 100 blocks out so that we can start bringing the village in. This is part of the village stacking. I'm going to build a little hallway that comes off of here 
and goes that way 100 blocks so that we can start walking the village in. As soon as I get that done, I will be right back. Okay, so I've hopped over into Creative World. I wasn't happy with the quality of the original recording, so I'm just going to redo it over here. Same thing, just in Creative. I didn't want to have to tear the whole thing down just to record it over again, so I just built up another little section of it you can see here. So what you're going to do is you're going to come to one of your outer villages. You're going to come to this wall right here. You're going to build a walkway that goes 100 blocks out that way. This middle block has to be something that you can put beds on this outer block anything that you can put rails on but these powered rail spots these have to be able to be a powered block so that you can power this do not turn these levers on right now we're going to want to leave these off this is going to help us stop our villagers at the right point when we're walking the villages up here and then we just light it up with torches i just put them across the from that because i have ocd and if i don't it's just going to bother me so what we're going to do is from here, we're going to go a hundred blocks out that way. So we're going to come here. This is 100 blocks. And then what you're going to do on your way in is on this left side, if you're facing the farm, one regular rail, powered rail for the lever. Don't turn the lever on yet. Leave it turned off. And you're going to have five blocks and then a powered rail. Five blocks with regular rail and then a powered rail you're gonna do that all the way down here and then when you get down to this end doing that you can come across here you can have you see you've got two two rails here at the end that's not really important how many are here it could have been however many that's just worked out to be two you're gonna to want to come straight across two blocks and then a powered rail. You want this powered rail to be dead in the center between that powered rail and that powered rail. So powered rail, five block space, powered rail, five block space. And I use glass here, but you can use whatever block. I just did it because it shows a good contrast between the two. It makes it easier to count. So five regular rails, powered rail, five regular rails, powered rail. Okay, in here, no beds yet no workstations do not put anything in here no beds no workstations if you've already put them in there it's not the biggest deal in the world just go in there get them out you don't want any beds any workstations in there okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to come down here we're going to come to the end you're going to bring your villagers over here doesn't matter how you get them here boat mine cart doesn't make any difference just get them here you're going to want to have a villager in a mine cart right here you're gonna to want to be on this side where it's right next to the powered rail come up here and place a bed and we're gonna give this guy a little bit of a nudge forward he's gonna to link to that bed come on buddy yep link to the bed okay green particles are gonna be very important throughout this entire process you cannot move to the next step before you see those green particles it is very important very important that those green particles happen if they don't it messes with the stacking mechanic and it's going to cause problems but he already went to that bed so we're going to come over here we're going to skip a block and put down that bed now you're going to bring your next villager up here in a mine cart no nitwits can't have nitwits no nitwits and preferably no babies okay so green particles he linked to that bed we're good there okay so we're going to give this guy a little bump go forward okay so the reason for the powered rails is it stops the villager right at the pillow of the bed villager bed powered rail villager bed powered rail so if you have to stop in the middle of the process you'll know where you're at you, you don't have to guess which bed goes to what villager so what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here we're going to give this guy a nudge he's going to come up he's going to stop on that powered rail you'll see put the bed down the pillow of that bed is going to be right where the villager and the powered rail are so you're good to go so as you go down make sure you turn these levers on because that's going to help us in our next step so that guy's up there with that bed he's going to link to that bed as soon as i break this one he gets angry he links green particles that's how that works so now you're going to come over here place another bed doesn't matter if you if you mix the order up on this part 
just make sure that you don't mix up which villager you're moving with what bed. That's why I put the powered rail in the, in the pillow to bed. Now we're going to break this. He's going to link. Now we're going to come over here, turn that on. He's going to move up to that one. Turn that on. Okay, so now he's up there. Place a bed. Come back here. Break this bed. He's going to link to that one. We'll turn this on. I'll push this guy forward. Put his bed down. Come back here. I'll break this one. He gets the green particles. So now we can keep on moving this up. Now the reason that these particles are so important and you need to make sure that you see those particles before you go to the next step. Once you have about 15 iron farms stacked in this, maybe less on a lower end device, is you're going to, when you do this process right here, when you put this bed down and you break this bed, it can take upwards of two minutes before you get those green particles. So you need to make sure that you see the particles before you move to the next step. Because if you're all the way down there at that end and you break a bed before those particles happen, it's going to mess up the stacking process and you could merge a village. So the green particles are very important. But I'm going to move this village the same way I'm doing, just stepping it up, skipping one block in between the beds all the way up there, and I'll be back when I'm done with that. Okay, so now that you've gotten your villagers up to this point, this is the last powered rail here, this is the last powered rail here. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to break into the farm. We're going to get these guys moved in here. We're going to bring a rail, go one past that, that sea land in there, and we'll go there. Now we're going to just continue this process going into the farm. What I would suggest is you can take these two workstations, just these first two, put those right there. These guys will eventually link to those here in just a second. Yep, the green particles, they both linked. All right, so that guy's linked to that bed. Now we're going to come back here. Let's stick that bed there. Come over here. Click the lever. Give this guy a nudge. He's going to go all the way in there. Break that. All right, he linked to that bed. It's going to be hard to see the particles above this guy's head because of the blocks right here, but just watch the bed. You'll see that he gets the green particles with the bed. That's the most important thing. So then we're going to place a bed there. Power that rail. Push that guy in there. Now we're going to break that. Now we're going to watch this bed right here. Green particles, okay? He's in there. That's good. Now I'll come over here. Place one final bed right there. We're going to get down here where we can watch it. Break that. He linked automatically. So we're good there. I'm going to grab this. We're going to take these rails out of here. We don't need these in here anymore. And what we're going to do is we're going to close this up. Keep villagers from doing dumb villager things. Okay. So now everything's good there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break into the farm right here. Make sure you close that up. Make sure you are in the habit of closing that up. That's very important. Okay. You're going to want to make this bed right here be the center of your village. If you do this on every single one, you'll know automatically that this corner is the center of your village. So once that bed is placed, you're going to come in here, you're going to break this block, you're going to break that bed. Okay, you can kind of see the particles right there. He linked to the bed. So now that bed is the center of this village. Okay, so now I'll put this block back right here. Now we can come out here. We're going to place another bed here. And then we're going to break that green particle there he linked so now these two villagers are linked to those two beds so now once those guys are linked what we can do is we can come over here and we can let these guys out of their mine carts what they're going to do is they're going to run over here and they're going to access their workstation this guy just went straight to his workstation, so you don't have to guess which one it is. You don't have to wait for him to pathfind all over the place to go to where they need to go. 
they're just going to pathfind to their workstation. This guy's going to be a little bit stubborn. Sometimes they do that, but he will eventually walk over to his workstation. Yeah, see, there he goes right there. Just give him a little bit of a nudge, get him all the way up against the workstation, trap door, water bucket, close the trap door. Okay, so actually, uh, we do need those rails here for just a second. So we'll put these back right here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put a trap door here and here. This is going to allow us to get villagers in with minecarts. And once we break the minecarts, because of this trap door being here, they will not be able to fit out underneath it here. They won't be able to path find out. They'll be stuck in this area. This is why it's not suggested to bring babies in here. But you can do it however you want. I know in Prowl 8413's video when he did this, uh, he said that you can breed villagers in here. So you just get these two guys in here, not lock them into their workstations just yet, and you could throw them a whole bunch of stacks of food, and they'll just breed up enough villagers. But you're not gonna, you're not gonna want to wait for it. it. This is gonna be a good process if you have two people one person running a villager breeder and then one person doing the the stacking part okay so now we've got these two guys linked to those two beds we can come in here and we can put the rest of the beds down so it's going to be a total of 20 beds once you've got all 20 of these beds in we can come back over here break our way out of here close this back up get in a habit of closing this up it's going to save you problems because if you're doing this portion of it at night and these villagers can access those beds it is going to be a big problem and if you're going to breed your villagers in here and make babies make sure you close off all of these spots right here because if the baby gets in there and sleeps in that bed, when it wakes up, it's going to glitch up through the block and it's going to go right into your lava blade. That's why I prefer bringing adult villagers from a breeder over here. It just makes things easier for me. I like doing it that way. Okay, so we've got our trap doors in here that are going to allow villagers to stay in there. They're not going to allow it to go out this way. Come down here. You're going to have your villager breeder at least a hundred blocks that way just keep everything nice and neat so we're going to grab a villager from our villager breeder get it up here however you want to do it just get them up here in the mine cart we're going to get this guy down here we're going to come over here and just give him a little bit of a nudge this is why we turned on all those powered rails see he just linked with his bed so he's going to come in here we're going to follow him all the way down all right, he's inside the farm now, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here, place down his workstation. This guy is going to link to that workstation. It's the only thing he can link to. There we go, he linked. We're going to break that minecart. Come over here, he's just going to walk over to his workstation. We're going to give him a nudge in there. Put that trap door down, water bucket, close the trap door. Okay, I'll show you that one more time. So, come over here, bring your villager from your villager breeder, get him in the minecart over here, bring this guy, give him a bump. All these levers being down means he'll just go right on all the way down, he just linked to the bed, and we'll get him inside the farm. Alright, this guy's in the farm now, we're going to come over here. I'm going to throw him a workstation down. Now this guy's going to link there. Already linked to the bed. Change his profession. Get rid of the minecart. And here shortly he's going to walk over to his workstation and then try to work at his workstation. There's certain times of day where they work at their workstation and other times that they don't. You can always just kind of nudge them along, kind of give them a hand getting to where they need to go. And then that way, when it is the time for them to work, they'll just go over there. All right. Daytime, they go right in. So we put the trap door down, water bucket, close the trap door. And we're going to do this same process for all of the cells around this. 
and I'm gonna get that done and I'll be back as soon as I get it done okay so now that you have 20 villagers in here they're all linked to their workstations and they're all locked into their little pods got a couple of things to do here we're gonna remove these trap doors I'm gonna fill these back in don't need this anymore you can do whatever you want to with this walkway out here what I would do in survival is I would take everything from this walkway and I would use that to move set up your next walkway for your next farm okay now what you can do in here because all of these guys are locked in they can't go anywhere I would break out these blocks right here to save on some material the one in front of him you can take these out as well that way you can access the villagers to trade them just make sure that you have this 2x2 two two on the end there and that 2x2 two two on the end there and then you can just take the blocks out from in front of these guys what I would suggest doing is I would suggest trading with these villagers at least one time what happens when you trade with these villagers at least one time is it locks their profession in so this guy with the smithing table he cannot change professions to the blast furnace guy that's over there he can't change professions to the grindstone guy that's over there he can only link to one of these smithing tables so it just makes it a little bit easier uh, updates have a very bad tendency of breaking iron farms so anything that you can do to keep that from happening or possibly happening is going to help so we just remove all of that all of those glass blocks and then that's going to save you an awful lot on resources too you can use the blocks that you pulled out of here to build another cell or you can just use cobble for this if you really want to okay so now that this is done right here you can come to this center wall right here and you can break all of this glass out right here if you're going to use this for a trading hall this is going to help out a lot make it easier for you to get around at least down here on this bottom level I would say if you're going to use this to trade iron for emeralds this bottom level should be all trades that trade iron for emeralds that way you can just walk around down here and get all the trades done so but yeah that's how this whole process works and then the next thing that you are going to want to do is you are going to want to come outside of the farm close this back up always make sure you close this thing back up villagers do villager things and it gets real bad so the next thing you want to do is you want to sit here and for every farm that you have in here you want to make sure it's spawning golems do not move to the next step before it spawn all all of your platforms are spawning golems so i have villagers in this one i have villagers in that one in the middle and i have villagers in this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sit up here and i'm going to watch and i'm going to make sure that golems are spawning in all three of these villages and i'm not going to do anything until i know that they're spawning in all the villages that way i know it's good and the other thing i would suggest is if you are doing this after every village that you stack make a copy of your world if you mess something up at a later stage you can always go back to the copy of that world but once you merge a village you are going to have major problems it's going to be a real pain in the butt to troubleshoot just do yourself a favor make a copy of the world that way you have it to go back to so i'm going to wait here make sure that the golems are all spawning in there okay so now that i've sat here and waited i know that there's golems spawning in all three of these villages i've watched them spawn there's they're spawning there they're spawning here and they're spawning here that means that we are good to go to our next step uh if you are spawning cats in these that's a pretty good indication that you're going to spawn golems but i would just wait until you see the golems spawn don't take a chance on it it, it only takes a couple more minutes if you have to wait a night cycle wait a night cycle so you got one there there was already one over there there will probably be one over here here pretty quick <clears throat> just make sure that you have golems spawning okay once you're done with that you're going to do all of these villages on the outer ring yeah there they are right there you want to get all of these villages on the outer ring from your center farm you want to do the same stacking process that we did right here you're going to want to do the same thing on this farm, this farm, all of them, all the way around. See, there you go. Three farms, three golems. Good. Okay. 
So now if you choose to do the 30 village version of this farm like I showed, you are going to want to make this seven layers tall. The only layers that are going to have this center farm are this first layer and the top layer. And you're going to want to build these four layers all the way up. And then on the top one, you're going to put this center one in. So on number seven. So you'll have this one right here that has five farms. Then you'll have five layers in the middle that have four farms each. And then the seventh layer on the top is going to be the same layout right here. Okay, so what you will do is you will stack these villages on the outer ring. And then I'm going to duplicate these outer villages spaced up. And I'll be back to show you exactly how high up they need to go and where they need to be. And I'm also going to show you how to build the iron dropper that drops the iron from the upper farms down into this, which will go down into your collection system underneath. So I'm going to get that built up and I'll be back. Okay, so this is now what you should have. You should have your five farms on the bottom. You're going to have villages stacked in all of these. I don't just because it's the creative world and it takes way too much time to do this again. But you're going to build these four farms above this bottom layer, directly above. These sea lanterns right here, I put these here because if you don't, drowns will spawn on this block right here. And you'll end up with drowns in your farm. I prefer not to have them in my farm. There's villagers. I'm kind of paranoid about it. So I just put the sea lanterns. And it's just one less thing that you have to worry about as far as drops and everything. Hopper speed is 9,000 items an hour. And yeah, this farm produces a insane amount of drops. I don't want to I don't want to back up the system because I have rotten flesh in there, a nautilus shell or whatever. So the way that this works is to stack the villages vertically, this level where the beds are, you need to have 13 blocks between this bed and the bed that will be right there on top of those glass blocks that are right there so the way you get that number is if you have this sea lantern here you'll have the sea lantern one two three four five six blocks and then you are going to duplicate that farm right here the only thing that's going to be shared on these is this one corner block right here that the sea lanterns on but this is how you do that okay now I'm going to be showing you guys how to build the iron droppers that drop the iron from this farm down to this farm. Okay, so now I've got all of my materials together. I like to face everything into the center of the farm. Once again, that's just my OCD. You do it however you would like. Um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to come over here, you're going to place a couple of temporary blocks underneath it here, probably right there. I'll take a hopper, I'm going to place it straight down like that. You're going to come over here, you're going to take a dropper, stick it straight out. You can remove these three blocks right here. Do not remove that one. That's what's going to keep your minecart in place. Okay, so now down under here, you're going to place a solid block right here. You're going to place a temporary block right here. You come over here. You place a sticky piston right there, facing up. Now you're going to take another solid block. You place that there. Place redstone dust there. Break that block. You're going to take an observer. You're going to face that sticky piston. You take your solid block on top of the sticky piston. You come over here comparator on top of there this right here is a pretty simple dropper clock it goes really fast doesn't need to but I, I this is the one that I know this is the one that I like so 
if you're going to do this in survival, I would definitely suggest putting something over the orange juice so you don't have a bad day. <coughs> but what we'll do here is I'm going to grab some iron because that's what's going to be coming out of here anyways. This will be like a golems burning up in the, uh, in the upper one. We'll put it in this hopper right here and stick it in there. All right, what that's going to do is that's going to shoot all of this iron down into the lower farm right here going to clear the lava you don't have to worry it's not going to burn up and that's just going to shoot all of your drops down into the bottom okay now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to build this same thing on all of these farms around anything that's not this bottom layer down here you're going to build this same auto dropper circuit all the way around and it it's just going to it's going to work really good for you and the way that this works is the drops come out of here and it goes into the hoppers into this this is considered to be an inventory and then it spits it out and then it resets the despawn timer so you don't have to worry about any of your drops despawning so it'll come through there shoot out respawn despawn timer starts it hits the water goes into the collection system and that's going to go down into your eventual storage system down here like i said at the intro I'm going to have the world download available with the shulker loader attached to this. I do have a tutorial on how to build one. I would definitely suggest it. This thing produces a lot of drops. You're not going to want to have that many chests underneath of it. It's going to cause an awful lot of lag. So just use the auto droppers. And then underneath of here, you're going to have the, the shulker loader storage system that I have a tutorial on. So what you'll end up doing is you will have for the full 30 farm version you're going to have one layer like that at the bottom you'll have four layers like this or no five layers like this in the middle and then you'll have one more layer like that at the very top now as i said in the beginning of the video if you are going for the full 30 layers of this what you are going to want to do is you are going to want to make this village that that golem's burning up in First, your second village that you will make is going to be the center village of the very top. So when your your top layer is these five villages, you're going to make the center village on the top one your second village. That way you don't have to worry about the villages being too close and merging together. And then that way you can reach the full 30 farm. Okay, so now we're back over into the original world. Like I said, I wasn't happy with the video quality for the first part of that, so that's why we went over to the creative world. But it's uh, the same exact thing, just one was in a creative super flat world instead of over here. But once you've got the bottom layer and the second layer built, you're going to just continue the exact same process all the way up. Now, the only difference is if you're going for the full 30 stacked farms, that center village up top has to be your second village that you that you make. You can get the Y levels correct by just counting the blocks from there, spacing, counting the sea lantern, seven blocks in between the top of the glass wall and the bottom of that deep slate tile right there. There's seven blocks in between there. So just... If you need to, pause video, do a little bit of quick math. But, like I said, the world download will be in the description. If you want to get the exact Y levels out of this, go ahead. Not a problem. So, you just come up here. You just start at the bottom. Work your way up. And then if it gets to a point where there's too much lag that you don't want to go any farther, you can stop there. If you want to try to squeeze them all in, go for it. I do not know on lower end devices how many you'll be able to squeeze in here. The only thing that I have to play on is the computer that I own, so I'm not really too sure. Uh, a couple of things, and then I will we'll be done. This auto dropper right here for the top center farm, I had to do a little something crazy on this because the drops were getting stuck on these ledges down here. So what you're going to do is you're going to have the hopper underneath of your hopper minecart, then two hoppers pointing down into that hopper 
into your dropper same auto dropper circuit and then solid block solid block and this right here in the middle is an upside down stair that's going to keep your drops from flying out getting stuck on the edges and i had to move it over a little bit so you can see right there the drops go down past the afk platform and the lava down there so that's kind of important now if we come down here to the afk spot this is going to be you can see you have your bottom layer your second layer your third layer this is the fourth layer up this afk spot right here this sea lantern that i'm standing on that is directly in the center from that farm that farm that farm and that farm and the y level for this block is the exact same y level as the glass block that those beds are sitting on it needs to be that y level that way you can operate the farm and have all of the villages loaded in and spawning golems at the same time but as you can see this thing's just pumping iron out like crazy it's just doing it's just doing what it does like i said at the very beginning any comments or suggestions or any feedback really is going to help me out a lot i'm still really new to this and i cannot tell you guys thank you enough for waiting for this i have a ton of time invested in this uh i built it three times the first time was 25 stacked villages the second time i had a hard drive go bad and i lost all of the footage on that so i had to build it this third time and i've got a lot of hours i would say i probably have over 120 hours invested just in the design and build of this farm so if you guys like it please smash that like button leave me a comment maybe consider subscribing and i will see you in the next one but yeah this is jay watts here is the 30 stacked iron farm that gives over 11,000 iron per hour Y'all have a great day.